I'm Ms. Sudleddy and I teach third grade ELA at Sally Humble Elementary School. Today we're going to continue on with our unit, The Stories Julian Tells. One of the books in our unit um, is this book right here, The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lesmore. So this is lesson seven and we're going to read this book and we're going to talk about central message. So far in this unit, we've learned how a story's images can add to our understanding of the text. And today we're going to discuss the central message of this book using key details. So we're going to reread the story. If you've been following along with us, we've already read the story, but we're going to read it again to see if we can pick up some things that we had not seen before. So as we read, I want you to think about how the characters change throughout the text. How did, did Morris stay the same throughout the whole story? Did the book stay the same? So that's what I want you to be thinking about. How do the characters change throughout this story? All right, let's get started. Morris Lesmore loved words. He loved stories. He loved books. His life was a book of his own writing, one orderly page after another. He would open it every morning and write of his joys and sorrows, of all he knew and everything he hoped for. But every story has its upsets. One day the sky darkened, the winds blew and blew till everything Morris knew was scattered, even the words of his book. He didn't know what to do or which way to go, so he began to wonder and wonder. Then a happy bit of happenstance came his way. Rather than looking down as had become his habit, Morris Lesmore looked up. Drifting through the sky above him, Morris saw a lovely lady. She was being pulled along by a festive squadron of flying books. Morris wondered if his book could fly, but it couldn't. It would only fall to the ground with a depressing thud. The flying lady knew Morris simply needed a good story, so she sent him her favorite. The book was an amiable fellow and urged Morris to follow him. The book led him to an extraordinary building where many books apparently nested. Morris slowly walked inside and discovered the most mysterious and inviting room he had ever seen. It was filled with a fluttering of countless pages, and Morris could hear the faint chatter of a thousand different stories as if each book was whispering an invitation to adventure. Now, it never says in the story what this room is, but we know because of prior knowledge and the illustration that this is indeed a library. But I like how the author uses the words. Um, it was a mysterious and inviting room. So to describe the library. Then his new friend flew up to him and landed on his arm. It held itself open as if hoping to be read. The room rustled to life. And so Morris's life among the books began. Morris tried to keep the books in some sort of order, but they always mixed themselves up. The tragedies needed cheering up and would visit with the comedies. The encyclopedias, weary of facts, would relax with the comic books and fictions. All in all, it was an agreeable jumble. Morris found great satisfaction in caring for the books, gently fixing those with fragile bindings and unfolding the dog-eared pages of others. Sometimes Morris would become lost in a book and scarcely emerge for days. Morris liked to share the books with others. Sometimes it was a favorite that everyone loved. And other times, he found a lonely little volume whose tale was seldom told. Everyone's story matters, said Morris, and all the books agreed. At night, after all the stories that needed telling had been told, and everyone had settled down to their proper places on the shelves, the great big dictionary would get in the last word. It was then that Morris Lesmore would once again write in his own book. He wrote of his joys and sorrows, of all that he knew, and everything that he hoped for. The days passed, so did the months, and then years and years. And Morris Lesmore became stooped and crinkly. I love how the author uses stooped and crinkly instead of saying that he's just old. I love that. But the books never changed. Their stories stayed the same. Now his friends took care of him the way he once cared for them, and they read themselves to him each night. Then one day he filled the last page in his book. He looked up and said with a bittersweet sigh, I guess it's time for me to move on. 
The books were sorry, but they understood. Morris put on his hat and took his cane. As he went to the door, he turned and smiled, then waved goodbye. I'll carry you all in here, he said, and pointed to his home. The books waved their pages, and Morris Lesmore flew away. And as he flew, he changed back to the way he'd been that long ago day when they all first met. The books were quiet for a while. Then they noticed that Morris Lesmore had left something behind. It's his book, said his oldest friend. Inside was Morris's story. All of his joys and sorrows, all that he knew, and everything that he hoped for. Then the books heard a small, expectant sound. There in the doorway was a little girl. She looked around with wonder. Then something fantastic happened. Morris Lesmore's book flew up to her and opened its pages. The girl began to read. And so our story ends as it began. With the opening of the book. Yeah. Okay, so I hope that you are listening and looking for how the characters change. So how does Morris change throughout the story? So to lead us into that, I've got a few questions. So let's think about, how does he feel in the beginning of the story? Well, the very beginning of the story, Morris is very happy. He's surrounded by books. He loves books. He loves reading. He gets to write his own books. So he's very, very happy. How does he feel when he loses all his books? Well, that's different. He's unhappy. Remember, he's flop. there's a big storm that comes, and he's just wandering and wandering through the streets. He's gray and dull. So we know that he is very unhappy when he loses his books. How does he change when he's surrounded by books? Well, he's happy again. So he's happy in the beginning. Then he loses his book and books, and he's sad. And then he changes uh, to happy again when he's surrounded by books in the library and taking care of them. Why does he share his books with others? Well, we know that Morris loves his books, so he's very joyful about them, and he wants to share his love of reading and share his joy. So that's why he shares it. He wants other people to be happy as well. So we're going to take all of these bits that we just talked about to answer this question. How does Morris change throughout the story? Remember, we always restate our question. So Morris changes, blah, blah, blah. That's when we do our answer. So we're going to use all these answers. You really have to think through it. It's not an easy peasy question. And here's what we got. Morris changes by losing what he loves, which are the books, and then finding the joy and happiness in reading again. Morris chooses to share his joy of reading with others. So that's how he changes. He was happy and sad and happy again, and then he shared his happiness. All right, so now we're going to kind of switch gears and talk about sentences and fragments using the content from the Fantastic Fine books of Mr. Morris Lessmore. So let's talk about what a sentence is. A sentence is a complete thought including a subject and a predicate. And of course, I always hear a lot of students say a sentence um, has a period at the end. Yes, you always have punctuation and you always capitalize, but the content of the sentence is a complete thought with a subject and a predicate. On the other hand, you have a fragment. A fragment is the opposite of a sentence. It's not a complete thought, and it's missing something. It's either missing the subject or it's missing the predicate. So it's either a sentence or it's not a sentence, and it's a fragment. Okay, and we do want to talk about subject and predicate. So your subject is the who in the sentence, either a person or a thing or an animal, and the predicate is what the subject is doing. We call this their action verb. That's what we do in my class. So you always have a who and a what they're doing, okay? Uh, Miss Lovelady ran down the hallway. Miss Lovelady is my subject. Ran down the hallway is the predicate. So it would be a fragment if it just, if our sentence was ran down the hallway. You're missing the subject. So we're gonna use this information to complete a writing revolution sentence strategy. So our directions say, change the sentence fragments into complete sentences. Add incorrect capitalization and punctuation. So all of these are fragments. They are missing something. We're gonna fix it using correct content. So it's gonna be from our book. We're not making up anything. We're using correct content from the story we just read. And we have to make sure there's correct capitalization at the beginning of the sentence. Um, if there's a proper noun, we wanna capitalize that and then put the correct punctuation at the end. All right, so let's look at number one. 
changes from gray to color. Think about our book. What changed from gray to color? What or who? Okay, good. I know that you're thinking about that. And this is a fragment because what is it missing? Is it missing the subject or is it missing the predicate? Let's find that out first. Well, this is the predicate because changes is a verb. It's something that you do. So we're missing the predicate. So who, I mean the subject, who changes from gray to color? Very good. Mr. Morris Lessmore changes from gray to color. Now we want to keep this predicate together right here. And then we added the correct answer. Mr. Morris Lessmore changes from gray to color. So our content is correct. That is absolutely true that happened in the story. Now let's check our capitalization. We do want to capitalize the beginning of the sentence. Also, Mr. is a title that we capitalize and put a period. We're also going to capitalize Morris Lessmore. That's a proper noun. That's his name. And for punctuation, that is a statement, so we're putting a period at the end, okay? Now, this is not the only sentence that you could have come up with, but there are just a couple other more choices that makes it correct. So, Mr. Morris Lessmore changes from gray to color. We could say um, the, uh, the little girl. Yeah, we could say the little girl changes from gray to color. Who else changed from gray to color in the story? Good, the townspeople. So that could also be a sentence. The townspeople change from gray to color. So all three of those sentences would be correct content. But what we could not put is um, Dr. Seuss changes from gray to color. That content is not correct because that wasn't in our book. It's not correct, okay? All right, number two. Come together as a community to read and borrow books. So is this the subject or is this the predicate? Good, this is the predicate. Come together, that's our action verb, good. So we're missing the subject. So who comes together as a community to read and borrow books? See if you can think of that using the content from our book. Blank come together as a community to read and borrow books. All right, let's see what we got. The townspeople come together as a community to borrow books, okay? so. Our content is correct. That is true. That is what happened in the book. Let's check our capitalization. That's the beginning of a sentence. So it's a capital T. Very good. We don't have any proper nouns that we need to capitalize. And then we put a period at the end because it's a statement. All right, try number three. Brings joy to Morris's life. Okay, that's the predicate. We are missing the subject. Very good. So who or what brings joy to Morris's life? see what we got. Reading stories brings joy to Morris's life. So that content is correct, okay? So content's correct. That is what happened. Reading stories brings joy to Morris's life. Let's check our um, capitalization. So we want to capitalize the beginning of the story. I mean, the beginning of the sentence, reading. Look at Morris's. That is a proper noun, so we do want to capitalize it. And then we have correct punctuation, a period. Now, this is not the only answer. Reading stories brings joy to Morris's life. You could have also put books brings, uh, brings joy to Morris's life. So there, there is a little leeway with answers. It doesn't always have to be the exact same thing. And our last one, enjoys reading her new book. So this is a predicate. We're missing the subject. Very good. Now, this one is a very specific one. If you notice the word her, so that... The subject cannot be Morris because of this word, her. It's got to be a girl. So blank enjoys reading her new book. Think about what happened in the story and see if you can put the correct subject in there. All right, now that you have your subject, I want you to read, I want you to say aloud your entire sentence, including the subject. So include your subject and the rest of it and see if the content makes sense. You check yourself. Very good. I hope you got... The girl enjoys reading her new book, because that content is correct. Or you could have written, the little girl enjoys reading her new book, something along those lines. So our content is correct, and we read it out loud. Our capitalization is correct, we want to capitalize the, the beginning of the sentence. There's no proper nouns in here, so we're good. And then a period at the end, because that's a statement. Very good. So you are now an expert at changing fragments into full sentences. So now we're going to move on to central message. I'd like you to say central message. 
Very good. Now, I hope most of you have heard of what a central message is. But a central message is the lesson the author wants us to learn by reading the story. Most stories have lessons that we should learn. How can we apply this to our real life? Um, so that's what it is. So your central message, if you look at this image over here, is supported by details from the story. You can't just figure out what a central message is in a book by not reading the book, by not reading the details. So your details always point you back to the central message. It's, what the, it's the lesson the author wants us to learn by reading the story. So now we're going to figure out the central message. So what message does the Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lesmore teach about reading books? Think about what we read. What does this story teach us about books? Are books good? Are books bad? Are they fun? Are they boring? Are they, you know, what was this author trying to relay to us as the readers? Think about that. I really think you can come up with a very good answer. Now look, we want to restate our question. So what message? So here's what I got. The central message of the story is that reading books can bring joy and connect people. So we know that they can bring joy. Morris became very happy when he found the books. Um, the little girl became happy when she found the books. And it can connect people. This is coming from when Morris decides to share his happiness with the townspeople. So now all the townspeople are connected with the love of reading. So I think that's what the author wants us to learn. All right, once again, we're going to go with um, the four types of sentences. We're going to review over that. We're going to kind of switch gears. Good job with central message. All right, so we have a statement sentence. Tells something. You just say it, and it always ends with a period. An example would be, I had a good time. We ate pizza for lunch. The next type of sentence is a question sentence, and it always ends in a question mark. Good, and it asks you something. It might start, well, we'll start with a question word. Who, what, when, where, and why? So when do we eat lunch? How are you? The next type of sentence is a command sentence. This is when you tell someone to do something. It also ends in a period like the statement, but you can tell it's a command because you're telling somebody to do something or you're requesting. A lot of times if you're requesting, you might use the word please. Please feed the dog. Go sit down. Come here. Those are all commands. And then we have an exclamation, which is an exciting sentence. It shows strong feeling, and it ends in, you guessed it, an exclamation mark. Good. So this is when you want to say something really exciting, like, I just won $100, or we just scored a touchdown. It's what you want to show for exciting. So we're going to take these four types of sentences and identify some sentences from the story, The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lessmore. All right, so here's our options, statement, question, command, exclamation. And I always like to put the punctuation over here so I can remember. So statement ends in a period. A question ends in a question mark. A command ends in a period. And an exclamation ends in an exclamation mark. Very good. All right, let's look at our sentence. Reading books can bring joy to people. We have a period, so it's going to be a statement or a command. Are you just telling somebody something, or are you making them do something? Reading books can bring joy to people. Say out loud if you think that's a statement or a command. Very good. That is a statement. So that's what we're going to write. Number two, that book told an amazing story. Our punctuation is an exclamation mark. I see a very strong word like amazing, so that's a shade of meaning that would be a, a brighter word. That book told an amazing story, so that is an exclamation. Number three, do you believe that reading books can connect people? We're going to circle our punctuation, which is a question mark. And that is a question, do you believe that reading books can connect people? So you want a response. So that is a question sentence. Good, y'all doing awesome at this. Number four, the townspeople connect to each other through reading books. Our punctuation is a period, so it's either a statement or a command. Are you just saying something or are you telling someone to do something? 
The townspeople connect to each other through reading books. That is a statement. Come read a book with me. Period is your punctuation, so it's a statement or a command. Are you just saying something? Are you telling somebody to do something? Come read a book with me. That's a command. Very good. You're telling someone to do something. You can make it a request. Please come read a book with me. It would still be a command. And number six, the little girl was happy when she read Morris's book. What punctuation do we have at the end? Good, that's a period. So that's a statement or a command. The little girl was happy when she read Morris's book. That is a statement. We're just saying, I'm just telling you what's going on. Very good. Now you can identify any sentence as these four types of sentences. You can open any book, look at the newspaper, you can Google anything. You can always identify what type of sentence it is. All right, so in this lesson, you did some very cool things. You learned that reading books brings joy and connects people. That was our central message. You determine the central message of a story by looking at how the character changed, and you identified sentences, fragments, and types of sentences. All right, awesome job today. I'll see you later.